pugnacious programmers, it's Prof G, and in this lesson we're going to animate on tap gesture so we see a satisfying bounce when you bip that image. <laughs> and we'll do this by learning how to use the scale effect modifier, the spring animation, and the with animation method. <laughs> Prepare to put up those swifty dukes as we enter the ring of big learning. We ended our last lesson by having our punch sound play when the user taps an image, which is cool, but now we want the image to pop like we're giving it a satisfying bip. So let's learn a few things as we get to our final goal. First, I'd like to introduce a modifier called scale effect. This is going to allow us to change the scale or the size of a view. So first, we're going to be changing the scale. So we need to create a variable to hold that scale. So up here where we define our properties, we'll say at state private var scale equals 1.0. Now this is going to be the value that we multiply by our original size. When we start off, multiplying the size by 1.0 leaves the scale unchanged. But now in order to use this scale variable, we're going to add a scale modifier to the image view. And we do that just above the on tap gesture. We're going to say dot scale effect. Now the description is kind of jargony. Just press return to accept this. But no, we can just pass in a value to multiply the original size by. So we're going to pass in the scale value that we just created. And since it's 1.0, when the app first runs, the scale won't change because the size is going to be multiplied by one. And that's no change at all. Now let's add another 10% to our scale modifier each time the image is tapped. Inside our on tap gesture, why don't we add scale equals scale plus 0.1. That's going to cause the image to be redrawn. Each time it does that, the scale value is 10% greater than it was before. Each tap is going to increase the image size by 10%. Let's try this out. We see how the image grows, but that's not the bounce that we wanted. But the scale effect is useful and it will be part of our end result. Now let's try adding an animation using the animation modifier that we worked with in our first two apps. But first, let me add a blank line below and above the image code to separate it from the spacers. Now you might remember from our earlier apps that we built that we can use a dot animation modifier to trigger the animation when a value changes. So let's animate our image when the scale changes. After the closing curly for the dot tap gesture modifier, we'll add a dot animation modifier, press return to accept this, and we'll start out with the first animation as dot default. We'll tab over to value and we'll enter scale in here to trigger the animation when the scale value changes. Now let's try this out. And oh yeah, we see that the default animation is that ease in out where it increases to a full speed and then decreases, but this only shows a change in scale. We want this to bounce, but there's an animation for that and it's called spring. So let's delete dot default. We'll replace that with dot spring, press return, pass in no values. Let's try this out. And it's thoroughly unimpressive. We can't really see much of a spring in the default values at all, but there are parameters that we can pass into the spring animation that give us more control over the speed and the springiness of this animation. Let's backspace over dot spring and type dot spring again, but now, and I'll scroll up to where you can see this, remember the option at the very end here where it says press option return to insert all parameters, do that. Hold down option, press the return key, and ooh, we get three additional parameters in here. One is response, that's sort of like speed. The larger the value, the slower the spring. I'm gonna put in a 0.3 here. Then there's damping factor. I'll put a 0.3 in here too. This is the springiness of the animation. Smaller values mean more springy, more bounciness. And I'm gonna highlight and delete the blend duration option. I've never seen anybody use that one. Now let's try this out. And we can see some clear springiness in here. Let's change the damping factor from 0.3 to 0.05, which should make it more springy. And dang, look at that bounce. Very bouncy. Let's change it back to 0.3, but let's change the response to 1.0 instead of 0.3. And ooh, that's very slow. What if we keep the response at 1.0, but change the damping fraction to 0.05? And we get slow and bouncy. Well, it was cool exploring those options. Let's go back to 0.3 for both of these values. And we're getting closer to what we want, but we don't want to increase the scale each time we want to tap. Instead, we want to simply spring the value seemingly unchanged. So keep the spring, but don't scale. Well, this is going to require a bit of finesse, but not too much. But we are going to get rid of the dot animation modifier, and we're going to introduce a new way of animating via the with animation statement. 
So let's first highlight and delete the dot animation modifier we just wrote. And inside dot tap gesture, let's delete scale equals scale plus 0.1. And inside scale effect, let's delete scale for now. We're going to put a ternary operator in here. Now we're going to toggle the scale between two sizes. So instead of the scale value in here, I'm going to delete this and we're going to add a state property named animate image initially set to true, which we'll use to indicate whether the image should be one of two scale sizes. And we'll show you why in just a minute. Now down here in the dot scale effect modifier, we're going to enter our ternary operator. So we'll use animate image, which is that true false value that we just created, then question mark if true, and then 1.0, meaning we're going to make this scale the full size if it's true. Else colon 0 0.9, meaning we're going to make the scale 90% of size if it's false. Then inside the on tap gesture closure, we're going to add animate image equals false, which will immediately shrink the scale effect down to 90% of size. So far, no animation. User clicks the image and we immediately jump down to 90% of size. But here's where that new statement comes in. On the next line, still inside the tap gesture closure, enter with animation. And again, the code completion description is a bit jargony, so just press return to accept this, and here's what happens. First, press return. This is gonna give us a trailing closure, and we're gonna put in here code that's gonna trigger an animation. So we're gonna say animate image equals true. Now, ha, since this is with animation, we're gonna jump up here and we're gonna change the scale from the old value 0.9 to the new value because it's true, that's gonna be 1.0, this first size in here, the original size. But we do this with an animation, not immediately like we did when we set animate image to false. Well, which animation do we use? Instead of the default animation, just after with animation and before the first curly, enter open and close parens, and inside those parens, say dot spring, hold down the option key and press return so we add all of our parameters, enter 0.3 for the response, and 0.3 for the damping fraction, and delete the comma and the blend duration, we don't need that. And I'll put in a comment to remind us after animate image equals true that this will go from 90% to 100%, but using the spring animation. So not immediately, we're going to animate when we go back out to our original size. You ready to try this out? I'm going to restart to live preview and bip that clown. <laughs> and sweet Johnny Ive, will you look at that swifter? An elegant bounce. <laughs> and the way we pull this off is that when we tap the image, we set animate image to false, which immediately redraws the screen, shrinking the size of the image immediately down to 90% of its size. Your eye doesn't really register the image shrinking because right away we hit the with animation line and we change the animate image back to true, which is gonna increase the size back to 100%, but not right away. It's gonna take its time doing that scale effect change with the spring animation because we're inside the with animation clause. And so that spring animation performs the transition from 90% of the size to 100% of the size with the zero point three values in the two inputs for our spring, giving us a nice bounce, which never seems to increase in size. Very elegant. Why don't you pop that clown a few more times to enjoy your Swifty skills? Well, nice work, Swifter. We learned about the scale effect. We learned to use the spring animation. We learned with animation. And we have our image springing and popping just like we want. Now in our next video, we're gonna learn to load images in from the device's image library, allowing you to bip any photo that you've taken. Keep hacking.